everyone, welcome back. Renelia here working with a March Kitaholy Kits mixed media kit. I'm very excited to use this particular kit uh, because I got to use the very sought after Vicky Bruton mixed media paper. Now I'm actually just going to do a layout today, which is a bit rare for me. I don't do these layouts very often. Uh, but I really wanted to use that paper. I cut it down to eight and a half by 11 and I'm just cutting down the size of the photo so that I felt like it fit better on the page. Now with the mixed media background, I'm taking that butterfly stencil and the Versamark ink and I'm going to ink blend through the stencil and you'll see it because I've previously used uh, some ink through that stencil just when I was doing some playing around with it. And then I'm going to heat emboss it using white embossing powder. This will create a resist. Uh, so when I take the ink sprays later on, I would be easily able to wipe it off the embossing powder and then I can have the butterflies showing through and the ink will just be on the paper itself. Now I'm using a just a paintbrush to wipe off or flick off the excess and that's what it looks like when it is heat embossed. It looks quite nice and it gives a bit of a shine which I quite like as well. And now for the fun part, I am now going into these two beautiful mixed media inks and I am just going to use a different few different techniques in getting it on the page. The first one is the one you see right there where I do little sprays and then I take my paper towel roll and I roll it over to soak some up. Now, the longer that you leave the ink on the page without dabbing it up, essentially, the more permanent it would become. So even if you, so if you leave it over the bit where you've embossed, it still, it will actually become permanent over the embossed parts as well as on the paper. So to get the real resist, you need to wipe it up before it dries off because it becomes permanent. Uh, another technique I use is I um, spray it, leave it for a little bit, and then I do the like sort of ink mixing, blending, whatever <laughs> technique using just some plastic packaging. And that again creates a whole different look. And I love how these colors, you can still see, like they don't blend 100% of the time. So they can, they, they stay pink and they stay blue, but then on some areas they blend into this beautiful purple. I just, I'm just gonna keep going and dabbing up bits where I wanna dab it up. And I also let some dry on top of the butterflies. The reason why I did that was because I didn't want the butterflies themselves to be too obviously butterflies. So I did want the ink to dry a little bit on top so that it just looks like there's a some mixed media interest, something fun in the back rather than being obviously, this is a butterfly. Uh, and then I let that dry and I'm just matting the photo of my little puppy dog on uh, this paper that we received in a Kitaholic Kits kit last month or the month before. Uh, so I'm really using my stash a lot here to try to get uh, the most out of it. And I'm also matting it on that pink paper. Now what I did is I chose papers that matched my background that I'd already created. So I'm using muted blues and slightly gray papers and also uh, very soft pinks to mat it. And now I'm just going in with layers and layers and layers making it look pretty. I flipped that pink dotted paper over and the other side has got this really beautiful floral. So uh, I had a little bit left over, so I thought I'd cut that off and stick it down the bottom as well. I love how the, uh, the, the torn edges look down the bottom of that photo. I thought it turned out quite nicely. I'm just seeing where I want to put it and I decided I'm going to add a banner behind my photo. I'm using this white and blue paper with writing on it, again, because it's a very muted blue, which I felt worked well with the background. And I'm going to stick that just behind, but I'm going to cut it off using the scissors because it was a bit long in the end, but I will use that paper in something else. I've saved those other bits. Uh, and when that's done, I wanted one more pop of blue because I thought the pink was, there was a lot more pink than blue and I really wanted to focus more on the blue. So I took this paper uh, from Coco Vanilla, I think, 
Yeah, I'm pretty sure it is. And I am just going to matte it because it actually was exactly the same color. You can't really see that on camera, but in person, it's exactly the same color as uh, a lot of the predominant blues in the background. What I often like to do is I like to create the entire photo cluster before I actually stick it down onto the paper. Uh, I do regularly check to see where it's going, but I do create the whole cluster and then I stick it down uh, just because it's easier to work with. Like for example, this distressing would have been impossible if I'd stuck this all down first. Uh, what I do next is I start doing those flowers and I just make three clusters of those flowers. Again, just like I always do, trying to follow the rule of thirds. Uh, one thing that I do down the track, which I wasn't a huge fan of, is I, when I stuck it down, I was so focused on just making sure that the mixed media background shows through properly. I actually feel like I stuck down the photo a little bit too much to the left, but that's okay. It looks fine. It doesn't look bad or anything, but I thought, oh, that's not great <laughs> uh, when I initially stuck it down, but I couldn't lift it up then. So it was, it was fine. It looked good. And I do really like how it turned out. I'm going through some, uh, die cuts, some ephemera packs, just to see what I want to use. And I knew I wanted to use that little Shih Tzu doggy because my little papa is a Shih Tzu. So I, as soon as I saw that out of the die pack, die cut pack, sorry, I was like, I have to use this. I have to use this. Uh, but it didn't really go with the colors. So I just used a little sentiment that says, I love you. And I stapled it to the poor doggy's bum. And now I am just propping that up on some foam or some double-sided foam tape. Uh, I usually can't do much dimension and much height just because I'm usually, when I do layouts that are similar to this, it's in my storyline chapters uh, notebook and that can get quite thick quite quickly. But because I had a big chunky album to work with this time around, because this is going in my Project Life album, I was able to add some dimension, which I was very excited about. Uh, and I really wanted that little doggy to sort of stand out and be lifted off the page. And I'm just going to continue making my clusters. I like that little circle banner, uh, the vines, I should say, and I thought it looked quite good. Now, I got these lovely Mambi sticker sheets uh, from the Kitaholic Kits shop. A lot of the things I will be using from here on out is actually from the shop itself. So I thought I would use a lot of products that I got from the shop and then... Um, sort of show that there's some incredible things you can get from the Kitaholic Kids, blah, 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 sorry, the Kitaholic Kids shop. Uh, next up, I'm going to stick it down and I'm being very liberal with my glue. And as you can see, like last minute, I move it over slightly. And I don't realize until I cut off most of that little cluster on the left that maybe this wasn't the best idea, but I'm just going to power ahead and not waste that cluster. I'm going to stick it behind the uh, little ephemera cluster on the top there. Uh, yeah, and I, I like how it looks. I think it's fine. It's fine. But next time I will remember not to lean it over so much. Next I'm going in again with the stickers from that Mambi sticker. It's not really a sticker book, like a sticker pack. Uh, I love them because they're already propped up on some foam dots. Uh, all of the stickers are, so it's nice because then you can have that dimension without fussing with it too much. That Jen Hadfield Tiny Fray stickers, they're puffy stickers. And they are also from the Kitaholic Kids shop. Uh, I realized afterwards I stuck them exactly one on top of the other. So I do move it over a little bit. And then I'm going in with Nuvo Drops. I've never used Nuvo Drops before. And I go a bit cray cray with them, to be honest. Uh, you can see that I just went nuts with them. I sort of thought I would make it look as though they were gold splatters rather than replacing enamel dots. Uh, and I do like how it looks. So I'm not complaining. I'm also taking that little house, which came from an ephemera pack from last month's Kitaholic Kits as well. The doggy did as well, by the way. I just didn't get a chance to use it last month. And I'm sticking that one down. I had three clusters of black. So the top to the left, and I needed just one other hit of black because that's how my brain works. Uh, I'm not going to do much journaling on this one. It's pretty much my dog stole my spot on my bed. That's it. So I just have a tiny little label uh, from, I think, a Heidi Swap sticker book. And I'm attaching that with my tiny attacher and just for the visual interest doing it at the top as well. Of course, I have to have a little black border. 
again, I didn't feel like there was quite enough black in the photo and black really anchors, um, sorry, the layout. Black really anchors the layout and I quite like how that looks. Uh, and then I'm doing my very minimal journaling and because I'm impatient, I smudged some of my little uh, Nouveau drops that I put on. But like I said, I had to look like splatter, so I don't really mind. And that that's the layout done. I really like how it turned out. It was my first time really doing a proper, proper layout like this. Uh, so yeah, thank you very much for watching everyone. I will see you all next time. Bye.